We're going to continue now with measuring outcomes, and we're going to talk about the most permanent outcome of them all, mortality. And mortality can really be thought of as a special kind of incidence. Now, if you remember, incidence is measured as the number of new cases over the number of people at risk in a given time frame. So mortality is actually the same thing, except the cases that we have really is uh, death. So all deaths are going to be new since you can't really die twice. So we can write mortality as the number of deaths, which is the number of new cases, and who's at risk? Well, everybody in the population is at risk of dying. And so that's in the denominator. Now the time frame is usually going to be in, uh, in a year's time. So we're going to want to count the number of deaths in a year and we measure the number of people in the population usually halfway through the year because, you know, populations can change within, over time. So we just pick uh, the mid-year point. So this is our time frame that we have. So mortality is just a special kind of incidence in which, in, you know, which we're saying the special case that we're looking at is death. Now, since these numbers tend to be small, because the number of deaths in the year are going to be much smaller than the total population, uh, and you're going to end up with these tiny little decimals. So in order to deal with that, we will often multiply this by a thousand, so we can get numbers that are easier to understand, or sometimes 10,000 or 100,000, and we'll call this mortality per 1,000 of the population. So the number that we would get would be the number of people that would die out of a thousand. So let's take a look at, a, at an example real quick. So here are some mortality numbers that I pulled up off of Wikipedia's mortality rate page and it lists a bunch of countries here and then their death rate, their mortality rate. So that means the annual deaths per 1,000 persons just like we talked about. So that means in South Africa 17.23 people are going to die per 1,000, every 1,000 people in the population every year. And so you can use this now to compare the different countries. And you can see that South Africa is the highest, with the Ukraine being next, and then Lesotho, and then Chad, and uh, Guinea-Bissau, etc., etc. You'll see most of these are, are in Africa, except for a few you know, exceptions. I, I never would have guessed the Ukraine would be number two. But this is, uh, this is what these numbers give you the power to do, to compare the different countries and their mortality rates. And we should just note that these are 2012 statistics. And we can also compare against times. And so you can see this table, also from that same page, compares in five-year increments starting at 1950 and proceeding all the way up there projecting, it looks like here, up to 2050. And so what CDR stands for is the crude death rate. And as we talked about, that again is the number of deaths per year per 1,000 people. And so you can see that this is steadily improving, that our mortality rate has been improving as time's been getting better. Oh, we got a little bump here. Look at this. Things seem to get worse in 2025 to 2045 and even 2050. I don't know what's going to happen then, but I guess we'll find out. And you can also have uh, maps that show you the crude death rates. And so here's crude death rates from 2006. And this comes from the CIA fact book. And here are the death rates 0 to 4, 5 to 6, etc., etc. And you can see the darker colors mostly reside here in Africa, and I'm going to guess that's Afghanistan right there. And then you can see the U.S. is probably around 5 to 6. Oh, look at that. Mexico is doing better than us, and so are some of these South American countries and some even Northern African countries as well. Uh, but this just, we can look at mortality, and so more, these, this crude mortality rate that we've measured, we were able to compare against other times and other geographic locations. Now, mortality can sometimes even be used to approximate incidence. Now, there could be times where it's difficult to measure incidence because 
maybe uh, we're looking back in time and, and we it was difficult to uh, diagnose things because remember incidence is a measure of new cases and if you don't have a diagnostic test for something how are you going to know uh, how many new cases there are so instead you probably mortality is pretty obvious right if someone dies then you know that they're dead so if we can use mortality to approximate incidence if two things are true first the disease should be fatal because if you get the disease and you live with it forever, then you're not going to die. So you can have a new case, and you're not going to know about it because the patient didn't die. And the second thing is that there's a short duration of disease. That is, you get the disease, and very quickly after that, you die. Otherwise, uh, again, like I said, you could have the disease for a long time, and then maybe you die of something else. And so there's no way to know that you ever got the disease. So one minute you're healthy, then all of a sudden you get a new case of the disease, and shortly after this, you die. So the first guy here represents the new onset, or incidence, and then obviously this guy represents mortality, because he's dead. And we can use the rate of mortality to estimate the rate of incidence as long as the disease is fatal, meaning you die, and you don't live forever, right? So you don't live a long time, so it's a short duration of disease. So when would this be useful? So let's take an example of breast cancer incidence, and I'm going to make up some numbers here. Let's say in the year 1970, let's say that there were 10 new cases per 1,000 people. And then 2010, there were 20 new cases per 1,000 people. Now, I made these numbers up, so don't go looking for these anywhere. But you might say, hey, did breast cancer really, did the incidence go up in these uh, intervening uh, 40 years? Uh, or did we just, are we just able to diagnose it better? Since we have new tests, we're able to find new cases. So we just have new ways of diagnosing it. So assuming that treatment hasn't really changed that much, we could look at the mortality. And if we see that the mortality is about the same, then you might conclude, you know, the mortality was the same here and here. Maybe we're just picking up new cases and, and those extra 10 that, that were floating around here, we just didn't know about them. They were still there. So if we had this test back in 1970, we would have 20 here as well. Because look, the mortality did not change. Now, this is assuming that there really is no change in uh, the quality of testing, but let's say that there is. So let's talk about ectopic pregnancy. And now what an ectopic pregnancy means, it's a pregnancy in the wrong place. So pretend this little drawing is a uterus, these are the fallopian tubes and the ovaries, and inside here you can see a fetus. Now, what might happen? Well, first of all, the fetus would never have been as large as I was showing, so let's make it a little bit smaller. But in the case of ectopic pregnancy, it's not in the uterus, it's somewhere else. Like it could be in the tube or in the ovary or somewhere even outside. So now we have an ectopic pregnancy. This, this fetus is not inside the uterus where it needs to be. And so let's compare the same time frames again, also 1970 and 2010. And I'm going to completely make up numbers here because I don't have the actual numbers. But uh, let's say that in 1970, the incidence of ectopic pregnancy is, let's say, 10 again. And the incidence in 2010 is uh, 20 cases per 1,000 people. These, these numbers are obviously way too high, but for this illustration, they work. And so why did it go up? Well, we have better testing now. We have ultrasounds and blood tests that we didn't have in 1970 that help us make the diagnosis much easier. Now you might ask, well, uh, is that true or not? Can we compare the mortality? And while the incidence went up, the mortality went down. And why is that? Well, because in 2010 we also have new treatments as well. So we got surgical treatments and medical treatments that we could use. And additionally, if we're able to diagnose it earlier, we're able to save more lives. So it's, it's very possible that you could see incidents go up and mortality go down. 
So in this video we looked, we, we had an introduction to mortality rates and namely the crude mortality rate and we'll look at some different mortality rates in the next videos. Okay, I'll see you later.